Instagram. I don't know, um, you probably don't know me and I uh, don't um, know how I roll my style, but I am very vocal, I um, don't bullshit, I am very to the point and um, blunt, I guess I'm blunt, more like more to the point, right? I don't pussyfoot around and say, hey, oh, it's it's fine, you know, like um, for my one-on-one -on -one clients, like I give them the information that they need and then they go with it, right? And if they're kind of fucking up, then I let them know. <laughs> like, like, hey, you know, you said you wanted this, but you're doing this instead, right? So you, everybody has, you you know, you get your grace period and, and you have, you know, it doesn't have to be perfect, but, you know, you tell me that you want to lose, you know, 20 pounds, but, you know, you're, you're super restrictive during the week and then you're binging on the weekends, not tracking, then, then that's something that needs to be addressed, right? So I will tell people like, hey, you gotta cut, you gotta, you gotta clean this up. So, um... And also show them how to do that too, because I see, I, like I know, like what the block is, and I see so many women restricting right now, and that is a problem because they're you're not getting your nutrition in, and I know this whole exercise more and eat less thing is um, what we've grown up with, and we were rewarded with that because in our 30s and like early 40s that shit worked like that's what we did we exercised more and we just slashed our calories for a little bit and it was fine but now in our 50s it's like ah you know late 40s right perimenopause and menopause starts kicking in and um that shit just doesn't work anymore and it's it's because over time you're 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 dragging down your metabolism so what we need to do is bring that metabolism up and work in a way that's going to support your metabolism and if you are a woman in perimenopause or menopause that means making sure that you are getting enough calories enough nutrition and not doing a shit ton of cardio you don't need to do cardio to lose fat in fact it's counterproductive so save the cardio for when you're in maintenance but you are spinning your wheels if you are doing cardio trying to lose weight while you are in perimenopause and menopause calories is going to be king so you can't eat um, say you're getting ready for Sunday brunch right oh I'm just gonna do this marathon workout for an hour and a half and burn all these calories so that those don't count it doesn't work like that um, so there's a ton of apps out there I personally use uh, my fitness pal and that's what my clients use and so with my program Everybody, I just got like a shit ton of friend requests in uh, my fitness pal. So with that being said, what I'll do is I'm going to calculate their macros on Thursday, but I want to see what they're having for the next three days. So some of them have already been tracking, which is great. Others are brand new to it. So that's why I did this video, uh, a video for them. Drop that in to the information that they're going to get. So I'm going to look at three days of their values and then kind of go um, track calculate their mac macros for their, give them a recommendation because what happens is I'm going to do maintenance calories first, right? That's how I know what, how many calories am I going to give this woman to lose weight? So somebody that has no idea, doesn't know, isn't tracking, has no idea what she's eating. I'm going to calculate her macros. And so we're going to figure out maintenance. So let's say you're 150 pounds. Well, your macros might be, say you're moderately active. You go to the gym a couple times a week. You are maybe a waitress and you're 5'5", 150 pounds. Your maintenance calories are probably going to be around 1,900 to 2,000 calories. And maybe at 5'5", yeah, probably around 1,900 calories. And then from there, I would go into a moderate fat loss, which would be taking 300 calories away. And this is to ensure that they're not losing muscle. So I want to just lose fat. And just by the fact that this woman is now actually counting calories, and I shouldn't say counting calories, is actually tracking macros. With that being said, with those calories, macros are just what makes up the calories. So it's protein, carbs, and fats. And I'm going to be bumping up this woman's protein. So what I'm shooting for is 0.7 to 1.0 grams per pound of body weight. So for a 150 pound female, that's gonna be anywhere from a shoot, like 112, I don't know exactly what 0.7 is a 150, 
112 to 150 grams of protein per day. Then we want to calculate fat at 30 percent and then what's left is carbs. But what most women are doing is they're going into MyFitnessPal, they're setting it to lose two pounds per week, it dumps them into a 1200 calorie diet which is a huge deficit and is not a not great for weight loss. It might work for like a week, two weeks tops, but then it stops working. And now you're not getting the nutrients that you need. And what it's doing is also setting your protein at 20%, carbohydrates at 50% and fat at 30%. That is not ideal for women trying to lose weight in menopause. It is just not enough. It's not enough calories, it's not enough protein, and it's way too much carbs. Unless you're an athlete, right? Unless you are um, an athlete where you need that many carbs, it's not beneficial. So what I am, what my um, diet approach is, is it's flexible dieting using macros, but it's balanced macros. So it's not a high protein diet, although people say this is high protein because I've never had this much fucking protein in my life. Um, it's not low carb by any means, so it's definitely not keto, and we're, we want to make sure that we're having enough carbs. Uh, we want to make sure we're having enough carbs, but we want to make sure we're having enough fat too, because if you don't have enough fat in your diet, that is going to affect digestion, it's going to affect your mobility, it's going to affect the way that, um, that you think, and it's going to affect your hair, skin, and nails. And then the reason why we focus on protein is, again, you need those amino acids that come from the animal proteins. Um, and I know there are some vegetarians out there, so it, for them it's very hard to get in that amount of protein, but I have worked with vegetarians and they can do it. It just, they have to be a lot more vigilant and do a lot more homework. And I find most vegetarians, unfortunately, are carbitarians, you know, they're just eliminating meat. And then, you know, th there's a whole, um, just a whole bunch of nutrients and micronutrients that you need to have that come from animal products that are you just can't replace so you do you i'm just saying it's going to be a little bit harder if you're vegetarian to get in the protein needs just because you're vegetarian doesn't mean that you don't need that protein right it's just gonna be a little bit more of a challenge so I start everybody out at 100 grams of protein, right? That's the baseline, 100 grams. Now, somebody who is like um, 180 pounds, who wants to lose like 30 pounds, I don't want them to eat 180 grams of protein. So I'm gonna have them shoot more for 150 pounds. But even so, they're gonna still start at 100. Unless, so this is where the, my fitness pal comes into play. When I look at their, what they're having, if they're already eating higher protein, then I'm gonna push them to eat that higher goal. But shit, I have not found that many people to be eating adequate, A, adequate protein, let alone enough protein. So I started at 100, but when I look at people's my fitness pal, they're not, they're not eating breakfast and they're having a salad with like two ounces of lunch meat or maybe two ounces of chicken and then dinner is like where they get their protein. So, you know, they're coming, they're like 60 grams of protein and then like when they start the challenge and this is for my one-on-one -on -one clients too, they're like, ah, like how do you get in all this protein? I'm like, well, hello, <laughs> you just got to start changing your thinking about what what we're going to be eating, right? So it's eggs, dairy, um, you can do like a protein powder. I don't recommend protein bars. Protein bars are just fucking candy with protein in them. They're just candy bars. They're not um, beneficial, but hey, if you're in a Target and you're shopping and you know you're not going to get lunch, then have a Quest bar. But that's not something that I would like rely on trying to get your protein in. I do recommend, I'll be right back. I have some protein powder here. So I do recommend that you supplement with a um, powder, especially at the beginning, and find something that you like and something that's not too junky. So Premier Protein, the ingredients list is this long, and there are two ingredients in there that will definitely cause you digestive <laughs> issues. Inulin and what's the other one? Plus there's a bunch of gums and stuff like that in there. So it's just not great for your digestion. And I know like they mark it beautifully, and the little shakes are like this big, um, amazing flavors, 30 grams of protein, so I get why people will want that, but they don't even look to like turn to see what the ingredients are. It's like, holy shit, right? We have, um, this is Quest 
these are so I like these just because they're sweet and they have a ton of flavor these the flavors are amazing with quest but they are sweetened with sucralose and stevia so if you can't tolerate that then there are other options um, I do have a code for orgain so orgain is a more of a natural protein powder those are still delicious much less ingredients but um, so this this has like seven total ingredients in this protein powder so just be careful when you're supplementing with the protein powder um, there are vegetarian options uh, this one is dairy based this is a whey um, protein isolate um, and then it also has casein so they are delicious so I, I like these as like a snack so I'll make something like this into my yogurt I love the salted caramel and I've been putting pumpkin spice in that so 26 grams on the salted caramel the vanilla has 24 and I mix it into my Greek nonfat yogurt which has 17 grams of protein so that's 42 grams of protein right there so it is easily done that's just with two ingredients and you can make a smoothie I don't I just mix it into a bowl because I don't want to clean my blender but that's just me so there's a ton of protein powders out there but don't say hey if I need to get 100 grams of protein well then I'll just have four of those right but it doesn't work like that so the benefit of having protein number one is it burns calories to the tune of 80 to 100 calories per day extra just through the digestion process now it won't you won't get that benefit with a protein powder um, so it has to be like something that can be um, slow digesting and those are fast digesting so that's like that's huge right that's like 700 could be 700 calories a week just in a digestion process of eating something so um, definitely get the protein up there and then also it's going to just keep you full so when you have a breakfast that's full um, that has a good amount of protein in it you will be full until lunch and then again then you have lunch and say like, okay wow more protein all right have six ounces of chicken breast on your salad and then when you get home you're not going to be starving you're not going to be in your pantry looking at all the snacks figuring out like while you're figuring out what you're going to have for dinner like what am i going to have right that was what i used to do i would just sit there house like popcorn and then i'd have some um crackers with some cheese and then maybe some nuts and then maybe a little bit of peanut butter <laughs> a lot of peanut butter and I could easily have like 700 calories by the time it was time for dinner then I'd make dinner and be like oh, I'm not really that hungry so have a little bit of have a little bit of um dinner and then you know put get the, this is when the kids were smaller you know and then um get them to bed finally relax sit down have some sit down and watch tv and then now I'm hungry right so let's well first of all let's have some wine because it's wine o'clock <laughs> and then so it was just like kind of a kind of a messed up cycle um just because I wasn't eating enough during the day so and not eating and not eating enough protein so um let's see happy birthday to Fred West have you tried earth chimp I have not um so so what we're doing is we're tracking macros we're gonna push up that protein again like I said everybody's starting at a hundred grams and unless they're already getting inadequate amounts of protein then I'm gonna push them for that for that goal because that really is the change maker especially in women and then along with that I am gonna give you a three day a week full body strength training program that is going to give that protein something to do all those amino acids that are gonna get sucked into the muscles same with carbs carbohydrates um, go into your muscles the glycogen the water from the um, carbohydrates is absorbed into your muscles in the form of glycogen so it gives you that pumped up look um, but ladies I know you're probably thinking I don't want to look bulky girls ladies I've been working my ass off just to get this amount of muscle on my frame I eat 150 grams of protein per day I am at like 125 pounds it depends on on the day I could be 122 I could be 128 you know so um, so I get 150 grams of protein per day I weight lift four to five times a week 
and I don't do any cardio. I get in 7,000 steps right now per day, and that's all that, that I do. I'm not in the gym all the time. My workouts are 45 minutes. With the program, you're getting three days a week full body. Those workouts, the longest one is 45 minutes. The shortest one you can get done in like 30, 35 minutes. And those are for at home or at the gym. So you get the option. Um, I do a lot with, I should bring a band up here. I do a lot with the bands um, because they're just easy and they're cheap. They're like 20 bucks on Amazon, but you will also need a set of dumbbells, like preferably five to 20 if you can get them because we're gonna do stuff like squats and you're not gonna get much um, bang out of a you know squat with working with five pounds you know those squat challenges where you do a hundred squats this week and then you do 150 squats the next week has anybody else built a butt on those because I know I've done the push-up challenge the squat challenge and the ab challenge I still don't do I didn't get no abs from that I didn't get um you know what the push-up challenge actually did work I'm not gonna lie um, but I didn't get anything from squats from doing all those damn squats because you're not adding any body weight to you're not it's just body weight you're not adding any actual weight to that and these legs your legs ladies are powerhouses so you definitely want to make sure that you are stimulating the muscles and if you can't get your hands on some weights then what we did during COVID for a lot of my clients is they got the plastic boxes of kitty litter and so kitty litter is cheap it has those handles and it comes in all different weights it comes up to like 25 pounds and so you could do a sumo squat right if you had two of those 25 pound boxes of kitty litter you could do a sumo squat right you just hold it here come down into a squat and lift it right that is going to be way cheaper than buying weights for sure, because weights are super expensive right now. So um, I know somebody had asked because they don't have any, so they found a set of adjustable dumbbells on um, Amazon for $130. And I'm like, wow, that's actually a great price. It was like five to 30 pounds. And I'm like, that's actually a really great price. And then I, I looked at it and it was for one. So gotta be careful with that. Um, so. I did end up finding a reasonable set on there for 170. I think it was five to 25 and um, for 170, yeah, I know that's still ex expensive, but if you were to buy weights, weights used to be a dollar a pound and now they're more like two bucks a pound. So if you're gonna buy a set of fives, that's 10 pounds of weight right there. If you're gonna buy a set of eights, that's 16 pounds, so it adds up. So it's actually more conducive to buy something like that. Plus it's a lot more time saving those um, things are coming in. Well, I don't know, why am I selling adjustable dumbbells right now? I don't know. <laughs> so with the program, you're getting that three day a week full body workout. You are going to be getting your macros calculations and you'll know how much protein to get in, how much carbs to get in, how much fat to get in. The most important thing is first calories and then protein. So you wanna hit your calorie goal, but if you are um, at your calories, say your calories are 1,600 and you still have 30 grams of protein left to get in, you're done. You're done. Tomorrow's another day. You're not going to put in, you know, you're not going to slam one of them premier protein shakes just to hit your protein goal because you don't want to really go over your calorie goal. So tomorrow's another day. I expect the first couple of weeks to be a shit show, honestly, getting all this in because it's changing habits. It's changing the way that you eat. It's changing the way that you think about food, um, which brings me to my point of when women don't eat enough, which is a lot. So half of my clients tomorrow, once I go in to figure out how many calories they're going to be um, having, actually I do that Thursday, but I'm going to start looking at their fitness pal and seeing what they're logging. And I don't, I'm not looking at their food. Like I don't care. I don't care how they're getting their calories. I'll address that in week three and week four, right? When we start saying, hey, you know what? Now that we have the protein under, you know, in hand, let's figure out like how we could improve um, digestion, how we can improve sleep, how we can improve um, our nutrition and then take a look at that stuff. But I'm not doing that right off the bat. So um, what was my point? Under eating. So 
a lot of women are under eating and they're stuck on that you need to eat 1200 calories to lose weight so when you do that you are down regulating your metabolism so what we have to do is we have to bring that metabolism back up and that's through reverse dieting so a lot of these women are going to be going into a reverse dieting process which I love because they get to feed them more and they actually start to lose weight because what happens is when you're down you've downshifted your metabolism that's just because it's adapted to those lower calories just like using your favorite shampoo and conditioner like oh my god this is the best I love this look at my hair looks amazing and then it stops working well then you have to use like a clarifying shampoo or something different to like kind of reset right and that's basically what a reverse diet is for is to reset the metabolism so that it can go back into a place for fat loss so what happens, you're under eating, you're not even giving yourself the calories that you need just to keep your process alive. And so what happens when it, with the calories, it takes what it absolutely needs and then it starts to store and it starts to store it as fat. And in the, in the meantime, since it's not getting enough calories, it's taking away from your muscle. So people are like, ladies are like, what happened to my body? Like I, I used to have a little bit of tone and now everything is just kind of soft and is a little flabby and my my shoulders are gone my butt's gone and what's what's going on so by under eating what happens is your body is eating its own muscles it's getting rid of the muscle because having muscle on your body is going to burn more calories it's going to bump up your metabolism so the body in response to you not eating enough calories is going to offload that muscle and then it's going to store whatever calories that it can spare as fat excuse me because it's preparing for this famine that you're in they don't know your body doesn't know your metabolism doesn't know that there's a refrigerator downstairs that you could easily be eating food from right so um so it stores it as fat and i know a lot of women think that they can burn calories by doing cardio which is not true doing cardio just increases your body's need for more calories so now you burn 300 calories maybe we don't know because these things are inaccurate it's just a guesstimate um there's so much that goes into how many you calories you would burn in a session and um so just assume hey it's 300 calories well now your body is like wait all right so we need that 300 calories back Right, so it's going to try to get it, and that's the, where the hormones, ghrelin, um, come, leptin and ghrelin come in, and it's going to cause you to be hungry, and then it's going to shut off that, um, that the feeling of being full, right, the satiety hormone. So uh, that is why I do not recommend cardio for my clients that are trying to lose weight. I don't want hungry clients, no, and it's just not effective anyways. So calories are going to be king control the calories and then by eating then people think that because they're under eating that the body's going to eat its own fat I already talked about is it, eating the own its own muscle but what it's going to do is it stores that fat and every time now that you're not eating your own fat you're eating your own muscle and so now when you decide to to get out of that diet whatever weight that you gain is going to be fat not muscle and then you you're like geez like i'm five pounds heavier than when i started this damn diet and then you do you decide to go on another diet well you're losing muscle and fat every time you do that super restrictive diet and then when you put that weight back on it just goes on as fat and so ladies, how many times have you dieted down and then gained weight? Dieted down and gained weight. Well, guess what? You're just getting fatter. You're not, you're decreasing your muscle and you're increasing your fat storage. So to get out of this trap, you need to have a lower, a lower calorie deficit which is why I recommend 300. You can go to 500, but why are we gonna to go to 500 right away? Let's do 300, see how you are. That way you can have more freedom during the week, then, then you're not fucking binging like an asshole on the weekend, right? You can still have all the stuff that you want, it's just not gonna be as much as you want. And then you're not gonna be setting yourself up for the weekend where you're like, oh, thank God, now I can have this, right? Because it just doesn't work like that. You, If it's like, if you, if you should be having for math's sake, 2,000 calories a day, you, by you saying, oh, you know what, I'm just going to have 1,500 and then I'm going to save it for the weekend, save these calories for the weekend, 
it just doesn't work that way. So now you're not getting en enough calories that you need during the week. You're just setting yourself up for that binge. And by like stockpiling or saving those calories, you've actually put yourself into a deficiency nutritionally wise, but also with your metabolism. And then all the shit that you're having on the weekend, right? You could have been having some of that stuff during the week, but the stuff that you're having on the weekend is pizza, donuts, wine, alcohol, whatever. It's not, um, you know, you can still have all those things during the week, just not as much. So, you know, it's this whole all or nothing and binge and restrict cycle that's, that's throwing you through a loop and is going to, to make you fatter. So for lack of a better term. So um, that's why I created Jumpstart to re-educate or I should say educate because we're not taught like how we should eat and as women it's like exercise more eat less that's it right even our doctors say you know when you're like hey you know I don't feel good um you know you start getting symptoms especially with perimenopause and then they're just like well you just need to lose weight and it's like you know, not helpful. They put you on birth control, even though you are in your 40s and you're not going to have a child. Um, they put you on birth control to control your hormones. It's just slapping a band-aid. It's not addressing the root cause. And then you say you just don't feel like yourself. You're depressed. Um, things just don't aren't, you know, as fun as they used to be. So here's some Prozac, right? Again, slap another band-aid on that. Really, it's diet. If Changing your diet and your lifestyle is going to give a huge improvement to your digestion, to the, your outlook, to your moods, to your depression, to and your body comp. And we just don't know anymore what to eat. There's so much information bombarding us out there. Do keto, um, go vegan, you know, don't eat meat. Um, eat this Beyond Meat bullshit instead, right? It's, it's such a bunch of crap. Eat 80% whole foods. Eat 20% of the fun stuff and you're going to be just fine. So you didn't have vegetables today. That's fine. Make sure you're getting them in the other six days of the week. You know, it doesn't always have to be a perfect day. But, you know, I think we have put ourselves into this, to this lifestyle too of not, um, it's always like gratify, 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 right? You, you see, you send a message and you expect somebody to text you right back. And it's like weight loss. Well, you know, I'm going to lose two pounds per week because I don't, you know, I don't have time to mess around instead of like taking your time, trying to build muscle, trying to lose fat instead of, uh, instead of losing muscle. And then you'll start to see your body comp change. And I've done this. I, I know. So, um, I know that it works and I have, I have clients that have indeed changed their, I can get a, I can get a picture out. For somebody um, so hundreds of women who have altered their body shape this one was a six-month transformation this is Deb Lynch she's 57 she saw this picture and she was like what the fuck is that she's like I can't she's like this I can't wear a bathing suit I can't wear a bikini she's like I she's like I can't like this menopause is throwing me through a loop <laughs> so so she got down, I don't remember, I think it was 22 pounds that she lost. Plus we did a, um, a maintenance phase with her too. So what happens is when you go into a dieting phase, you've been eating lower calorie for a while. So now you have to kind of practice going back up to maintenance because we, I don't want her to regain all this fat. So we slowly ramp up her calories. So what we, and she lost her weight on 1700 calories. She cut out her cardio and she weight trained three times a week. Now she's like, why was I ever doing so much cardio when all I had to do was just go down in my basement and she has an amazing gym. It's like not even in her basement, but it's downstairs. Um, she's like, I could have been doing this the whole time. So she's like, I wish you were around, you know, 10 years before. So, you know, it age, Age isn't the issue. Menopause isn't the issue. It's your lifestyle and your diet and your nutrition and, and the things that you're doing. So um, this, these are all the things that I address with my program called Jumpstart. And that starts tomorrow. There are four spots left um, as of, well, I checked about a couple of hours ago. So um, 
you know, I actually don't know how many there are left to, to tell you the truth. Probably four, I would say, um, because there's always those last ditch people, right? I start getting messages and they'll, they'll come tomorrow. They'll be like, oh, oh shoot, that's right. I was going to do that, you know? So, um, once it's full, it's full, but I do have another round starting October 18th, I believe. So if you're not ready to get in on this round, that is fine. There will be another round starting on October 18th. And um, let's see, details on that. It is a group coaching program. So I do have a Facebook group that is very robust in there. They're chit-chatting back and forth. You, Your participation in that is up to you. I know some people don't do Facebook, but I think it's very beneficial to be in that group because... Um, the recipes that are being exchanged, the ideas that are being exchanged, um, the camaraderie, they're friends with each other on MyFitnessPal. They can see each other's diaries and they can see like, oh shit, how did she get 50 grams of protein? Like, oh, okay. Like, oh, you know, it's, it's helpful to see other people's ideas. I mean, I sit there and give you ideas all day long, right? I'm popping in with my breakfast into Facebook. I'm popping in with my lunch into Facebook. So it's just easier to deliver those quick, fast little videos on a platform like like um, Facebook where I can actually talk and not have to worry about an algorithm for TikTok, right? So um, I do post plenty of my breakfast and lunch videos on TikTok. And so you can look in it anytime you see a food, that's my breakfast or lunch. And um, then there's a coaching call. So that's where you would bring your questions and the, the beginning, like the first two weeks, again, it's all about the protein. It's all about like, how are we gonna get in all this protein, right? Because women just aren't used to eating, you know, 100 grams of protein isn't a lot, unless you're somebody who's very small. Um, you know, you should be getting in one gram per pound of body weight. So the benefits, I've already talked about the benefits of that. So um, there's a theme for each week that I will be discussing on the calls. The calls are Wednesday night at 9 p.m. EST, so that my East Coast, late, West Coast ladies can hop on, and then I have a 9 a.m. on Saturday EST. <clears throat> so I know none of my California girls are gonna be there. So um, two opportunities, and I would suggest that you make at least one of those calls to get whatever questions that you have answered. But as you go through, like, you know, there's a lot of chatter in the Facebook group and I'm in there a lot. So um, I always answer whatever questions anybody has, especially like somebody was like, I don't feel like I'm doing this, you know, exercise right. Um, the workouts are delivered in an app called True Coach. So what you do is you take that to your gym or to your basement, whatever, and it will show the exercise. It shows a 20 to 30 second video of how to perform the exercise. And then I tell you how many reps and sets and then how much rest to take in between. So, but um, if anybody has any questions about that, they can actually film themselves and that way I can see like, what are they doing? And um, so it's a cool app. And that's, that's basically it. Tracking through an app called MyFitnessPal, which is free. The access to True Coach is free. I pay for that. And then coaching calls are free and the Facebook is free. So um, it's a pretty good deal. My coaching, what I charge, if you wanted a workout program from me, I would deliver that to you in True Coach. That's $150. And my one-on-one -on -one coaching for nutrition only is $300 a month. So you're getting a $450 value for $300. And that's a month, right? Actually, my nutrition and training together is $3.99. So um, it's, a, it's, a, it's a value, it's a, it's a huge value, and it's a great way to, to intro, to see like what my coaching style is like. And I have people that do multiple rounds too. So they'll be like, I mean, and even by like week three, they're like, I'm already, they're, they're, I'm already ready for the next round, you know, because six weeks, is just a reboot. It's an exercise and nutrition reboot, but the accountability that I provide in the information, right, it's all valuable. You can't hear some of this stuff enough, right? That you just, it just takes a while sometimes for this to sink in. And people are like, you know, I just, I don't know, I, I just can't eat all this protein. I'm like, Jesus, you're only having 50 grams of protein. What else are we having? You know, it's like, because it's not easy, right? You have to plan it, and I give you all the strategies for that. I give you the ins and outs and the shortcuts on how to track in MyFitnessPal so you're not sitting there on your phone all damn day trying to track. 
um, giving you, you know, strategies for, you know, on the go for women that are busy. Deb, Deb, Deb was a nurse. She was in a high stress. She was a um, ER nurse and worked like some pretty insane hours and she made it work for her. So um, it's just about finding like what works for you, incorporating the foods that you love. I don't give you a meal plan because if I gave you a meal plan, you'd be like, what is this? I don't like tuna. I don't like, um, you know, turkey breasts, you know? So um, we gotta figure out what you like and then incorporate that. You should have meals that you look forward to having. You know, maybe, I mean, I know you don't, maybe you don't love um, vegetables. I mean, I do, I love broccoli, asparagus, cauliflower, I love all that stuff. I love a good, like, big ass salad. But, you know, you still have to have these things. And a ton of, I eat, like, berries are my go-to for sure. Um, Greek yogurt's a go-to that has a ton of protein. And chicken, I mean, you know, I do eat a lot of chicken, but I try not to have chicken every day. I, I mix it up with fish. Um, being on Cape Cod, I have access to some nice scallops and lobster. And I actually don't eat lobster that much. Shrimp, I eat a lot of shrimp. Um, shrimp and tuna. And I've been doing um, sea bass here as well. So it's just a matter of like incorporating new things into your diet and your lifestyle. And that takes a little bit of time to form those habits. But once you do like, you know, then once we're done working together, then you're going to know you've altered your habits. You've altered your lifestyle. So that's just the way that you eat now. You know, it's not like, oh, well, I'm done. That diet's done. It's not a diet. It's shifting your lifestyle to show what works. And then it's very exciting because what happens for measurements that go down, 99%, those belly measurements are the first ones to go down, right? Of course, you lose your boobs, but <laughs> in any kind of a fat loss phase, but it's, it's always belly measurements come down first and then chest is, um, chest and, and hips um, don't change as fast as the belly measurements do. So that's actually very motivating when you see like that thing that you're most frustrated by is, is actually getting changed. And, and you're losing fat from all over. It just seems to be more apparent like when you lose it from your belly and it's more comforting too. So um, I don't know. Do you have any questions about Jumpstart or about anything else? All right, Costco has a great set right now. Oh darn, I'm missing all these things. Um, I assume you're talking about adjustable. All right, so what if you enjoy cardio? Can you still do it? If you enjoy it, then, then go for it, but just know that doing cardio is just, your body is going to ask you to replace those calories. So doing cardio just increases your body's need for more calories. So don't use it as a way to burn calories because that's not what's happening. But if you are doing cardio, then replace those calories. Not all of them because you don't know how many calories you're burning. It's just impossible to tell, but you're gonna need to um, make up for those calories that you're burning. So, you know, don't just say, hey, um, You know, I burned I burned 300 calories, and so like I can eat those. You didn't burn, you didn't go into a deficit by doing the cardio. So you want to be mindful of the calories that you are having, and then making sure that. Oh, that was the battery on my thing. And then making sure that um, you replace those calories because your your body is going to try and get those back anyways, either by making you really hungry. Um, or when you do start eating, that is going to be shut off the satiety factor and you're just going to be like, wow, why can't I stop eating? You know, and it's never like the broccoli. Like I said, it's always the chips and you're like, oh my God, these are so good. That's your hormones saying like, Hey, keep going because we're trying to replace these calories that we burned over here. So, um, ba -ba -ba. is that all? because I know it's a holiday, it's a holiday weekend. I have a ton of stuff to do um, for tomorrow for my Jumpstart ladies. I did just record a fire podcast with um, 
with my friend Ruby Sherry. She is on TikTok. She needs some followers so that we can go live, right? She's <laughs> she hasn't been doing TikTok very much. She's very um, prominent on Instagram. So it's Ruby Sherry one. It's R U B Y C H E R I E. And um, I did a duet with her and she did like, she was talking about um, the belly, like where your stomach is actually up here and it's not here. Um, so go follow her because she is fire. She's a firecracker. I had her on my podcast. We talked for an hour. It's the longest podcast that I've ever done. Um, usually my interviews are anywhere from like 35 to 45 minutes, but um, I found her, I asked her to be on my podcast. We started, we started talking and I'm like, oh my God, I'm like, I think we're going to be friends, right? She's just, she's just awesome. And so check out my podcast. It's called Mastering Menopause. And then go to the link in my bio and all the links to all my stuff is there, right? I'm on Instagram. I do YouTube videos. I do my um, podcast. Most of my episodes are like six minutes long. Um, except for my interviews. I did another one with Aram Gregorian. You might know him from Instagram as Four Weeks to the Beach, who puts out a ton of great information. But with um, Ruby Sheri, we talked about metabolism, about what's stopping women from losing weight, which is their, themselves, right? It's the, all the stress that we're under. It's the pressure that we put ourselves on. It's all the things that we do. It's um, nobody can do things as good as us. We want things right now, and um, so there's a whole mindset that goes into it, which is I address a little bit into, I love the way it's, um, that I address a little bit with my program, but it's only six weeks, and the big rocks, the biggest rocks, right, is going to be getting your nutrition into, into play, like getting that dialed in and then we can start talking about the other stuff the stress and the sleep and the nutrition and digestion and stuff like that so but the biggest thing that i want to address first is getting your getting a weight training program started for you ladies and make it easy and um and and then the nutrition because that's going to be the main piece for my clients like i'm working on all of that all the stuff right but with six weeks it's not a ton of time and I'm coming up with a program, it should be ready in November for anybody that is in this reverse diet protocol. So this is for the woman who has been chronically dieting for the last 15 years that doesn't eat enough calories and isn't supporting their metabolism, that was me, who is doing way too much cardio, that was me, and now has to repair, restore, and reboot their metabolism. So. Instead of gaining fat, look at all this action that's going on here. I love it. Thank you. Um, so there are things that, you know, there aren't things. There's, there's calories that need to be eaten, right, <laughs> that you got to bring on board. But there's also a huge mind piece set to that where people are just like, no, I can't. I, nope, I, I, nope, I can't. I can't have more than 1,200 calories or I'm going to get fat. So I have a huge program that's going to be addressed that. That's going to be a three-month program because it does not take six weeks for me to get somebody in a reverse diet. So I know on Thursday there's going to be a ton of people in that reverse diet protocol and, um, you know, it's just going to take a little bit. It depends on how long you've been in that cycle for. But my clients are 45 and 55. I know I was in that cycle since I was 30, since my kids were little. So let's say 45, you know... 18 years. I'm 53 now. I didn't get my shit together until I was like 47. So, yeah, you know, that's the way it goes. <laughs> but, you know, don't use age and don't use menopause as an excuse for you to not get in shape. Yes, if you have an autoimmune disease, if you have, you know, um, Hashimoto's or something like that, then yes, it's going to be a challenge and you need to address that first. But metabolic dysfunction can be addressed easily through diet and through changing your lifestyle and not dragging your body down, dragging it through, like making it do all these things that, right, when you're 40, in, you know, later towards, headed towards 50, um, some of these things are just, they're not, you have to look at it as, is, is this a, a positive or a negative? So like, is exercise, is this in, impacting my body positively or negatively? And same with your diet. Is this a diet? Is this positive? Right? Is a keto diet going to give me positive effects? Maybe if you, um, you know, if you have, 
like an insulin sensitivity or um, you have you know so certain kinds of diseases, then that might be a positive. But for most people, that is going to be a huge negative. Um, so you just have to kind of look at those things. Like, is it a drain or a charge? Um, you not sleeping is is a drain. You think that you need to stay up and watch two more episodes of Shit's Creek, um, or say, you know, if it's Shit's Creek, you're gonna watch four more because they're they're short ones. Um, and, and that's giving you enjoyment and, and you're relaxing, but you're taking away from your sleep. You know, you sitting there on your phone, you know, until 11 o'clock at night, 12 o'clock at night, is stre it's stress, it's the blue light, it's the EMFs, it's the, that you should be winding down. So, all right, now I'm getting in the weeds. <laughs> that's this is all the stuff that I address like later, but you know, sleep and stress, Cardio is just going to add stress in most cases, is just going to add stress to your body and increase your cortisol levels, and so that is a drain. Um, and I know people say, if I don't do cardio, then somebody's gonna get hurt. Like, girl, you're the one that needs to stop doing cardio. <laughs> that was me, right? Do a freaking yoga class. Oh my God, like when I did yoga, like I couldn't even, I couldn't even lay there for the, for the end. I was like, oh, come on, wait, let's, we're just gonna lay here for 10 minutes. I'm like, I don't have time for that shit. Like I got stuff to do and I would leave. I'm like, yeah, I gotta go. Yeah, I got, I got, got I got something, right? Such an asshole. <laughs> now I can actually relax and enjoy and actually look forward to that end part where I'm actually laying there and not doing anything, right? That's like the best part of the yoga and, and so, but it took me a while to get there because I was at on the go. If I'm not, if I'm not sweating my ass off, if I'm not about to puke, if I'm not, you know, working hard, then this is, I'm, it's not worth doing. Hello, um, I drove my adrenals into the shitter, I drove my metabolism into the shitter, and then I had to do nothing for six months. So, there you go. <laughs> then add not sleeping to it, add, um, well, I can't sleep because I, I'm all wound up, so let me just drink three or four glasses of wine so that I can sleep, and then get up in the morning, feel like, tired and feel like shit, and so well, I'll just have three, four cups of coffee during the day and now I can't go to sleep because I'm wired so let's let me have some more wine so I can you know it, it's just a <laughs> it's just a loop so we need to change the tape ladies we need to get the cassette out of the player we need to switch to a DVD right we need to switch to a different operating mode and and, and change that DVD or CD or whatever so um, all right that's all I got glutes game strong Oh, I guess I'm not going anywhere. <laughs> All right. So how come I'm not eating or hungry and still gaining weight? So annoying. Um, so you are a perfect candidate for that reverse diet that I was talking about. Go to my YouTube, go to my podcast. There's a ton of resources on there. The link is here in my bio. Um, why the 1200 calories sucks. Um, why uh, and metabolism, how to improve your metabolism and the diet before the diet. So how to prime your body for fat loss because by not eating enough, you have down regulated. So your body has, has become adapted to those lower calories and so is your hunger and that's not a good thing, right? So you need to push it back up and that's using a reverse diet protocol and you're gonna be a perfect candidate for my program that's coming up in November. Um, but I have people say all the time, I'm just not hungry. Like, no, that's your mind saying, you know, no, we're not, we're not doing this because we're going to get fat if we eat. And that's just not true. Um, this was me, but I just starting eating regularly and I'm losing now. Boom, baby. So what happens is you bring on the, you bring on the calories, you bring on the food, and then your body says, holy shit, she's feeding us. So now we can get rid of this fat and it can get rid of the fat, right? But it won't do that if you're not feeding it enough. So dramatic, I know. <laughs> All right. All right, so thank you so much for all the likes. I love it, love it, love it. Um, all right, Louisa, do you still wanna come on live? It's asking me to invite you. So if you're still there, 
I'll bring you on live. We can do a we can do a quick um, consult. If anybody wants a quick consult, I'm I'm down. You just have to ask to be in. Of course, we're, I'm going to talk. You know, ask you some personal questions. <laughs> I love all the emojis. Very cool. Thanks. Thank you so much. Um, all right. Well, I am going to go and I appreciate you for staying on. I record these, so I'm going to upload it to YouTube. I call it my TED Talk. <laughs> yeah, my TED Talk. T-O-K. So clever, isn't that? So um, upload, I'll upload it to my YouTube. I guess I'll do that now because I got nothing else to do except for drink a glass of wine. I know. But it is Sunday. So I let, I don't let myself. I have wine on Sunday. So that's just the way it is because it's freaking Sunday. <laughs> so that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go have some. What am I drinking? I'm going to have some. Oh, I have a little bit of Sauvignon Blanc left in the, in the bottle that I have to get rid of. And then I have to, um, then I have a, a uh, Chardonnay that I'm going to hit. So, 54 menopausal can't gain any muscle, cannot lose 10 pounds. So, um, it's really hard to gain muscle. You have to eat in a surplus to gain muscle. You also have to work really hard at it, and you have to overload the muscle. So, you're not going to gain muscle just doing five pound weights, right? You really got to work at gaining that muscle. Make sure you're eating plenty of protein. And again, it's a, it's a calorie balance. So uh, menopause is a Goldilocks. You can't eat too many. It's a Goldilocks era. You can't eat too many calories. You can't eat too many calories and you can't eat too little calories. So you have a buffer here of about 300 calories. Well, you're eating 1,200 calories. That ain't fucking enough calories, right? You gotta figure out what your maintenance is, which is anywhere from 17 to 2,200 calories, and then go into a deficit from there. But this 1,200 calorie bullshit is bullshit. It's not working, right? You can't try harder. You can't eat any less or do any more exercise. It's just not working. So, um, it sounds to me like your calories are not in balance and that you're not eating enough, but maybe you're, maybe you're doing the opposite and are eating too much. So, but I would, I would think, um, because of the, what you said that you've been trying to lose weight. So I'm going to assume that you are in too low of a deficit. So you might be a perfect candidate for Jumpstart actually. <laughs> so I'm gonna go. I'm gonna have some wine. 